Right, we are getting close to the point where the fun should start, fingers crossed. Uh, the first thing we obviously need to do is get the software onto the Arduino. And before we do that, I need to um, get the software to you. Um, I'm not quite sure how to do that, to be honest, but the, the best way I've come up with is to go uh, to my Google Drive and I've put the, the, the software on there on a, in, a, in a file. So um, I'll put that link in the descriptor with this video, um, which obviously I can't do because I haven't uploaded this video yet. So what I've done is I have clicked on uh, this link here, which I've just put in, in Word for the moment. But before we do that, oh, let's do it now. OK, uh, right. So let's click on this control. Da -da. Right. OK, so this is the software which will run our system. Uh, we need to copy the entire thing from top to bottom, including all the little brackets down here. Um, I'm not sure how this will appear on your screen, obviously, because I don't know how it will uh, arrive. But for my purposes, I'm just going to click somewhere on the text. And I'm going to Control A to select all. Control A, select all. I'm going to copy that. Control C. Uh, now, it's absolutely imperative that every single piece of this code is included, otherwise you might find it doesn't work. Um, right, so then we go into, let's go into our Arduino software, and we want to file new. Okay, so a new file's open, so I'm just going to expand that. And I'm basically now, I want to delete everything in this file completely. So delete everything, so, because we don't want anything duplicated from, from, from my program, which may not make it run so control P V rather sorry control V paste so right got my software in this program now and obviously the first thing I would normally do is now save this um, my actual program starts there which is on line two on here so I don't need that line one I can get rid of that doesn't matter if it's still there but let's get rid of it anyway um, and the very last bit, if I, my, my, um, my software is numbered, which, which you can turn on and off. And I think in the Rudy video, video, he says to turn it on. So just to make sure my line one starts there and the last line is. Oh, it's a lot of it. Right, the last line is, oh, okay, right. Well, can you see that down the bottom there? It's obviously come across with uh, the, the cut and paste, which we don't want. So I just want to get rid of all that. The last line here should be 455, and it's a little curly brackets. Uh, and the way I can make sure that that works properly is if I tick the verify button. You can see that. Tick the verify button up there. That will now compile the software to make sure that it works properly and it says done compiling so that's good if if you get an orange bar something's gone wrong somewhere um, and we just need to figure out what that is it's possibly that there's some text hanging on in there that shouldn't be there but as far as i'm concerned the last line on this coding is 455 with a, a curly bracket and the first line is uh, two forward slashes now i don't want to go into the software too much because um you probably are not interested. We just want to get this thing running. But there are a couple of things that we need to point out and set up as well. Now, anything on this software with two forward slashes like that, you can see that, that implies that whatever is behind that is ignored as far as the program is concerned. In other words, we can make a statement and we can just read it off. So um, that top line there, look upon my coding, ye mighty and despair, exclamation mark, is probably not that far from the truth. I mean, I'm no programmer here, and I, I had to put this together over a few weeks. Um, a lot of pulling my hair out, but it, it seems to work. and I'm very happy with that, I hope. Um, so uh, what do we need to do here? Right, in terms of actually getting this running, I've tried to make sure that um, the minimal amount is required. Um, and for that, I've set up this so that you've got two forward slashes which tell you there's a comment user set values so that tells you that there is a need for you to take a look at these values and set them to whatever you require and let's go through them in turn 
Right, and do you remember we have three signals set up for this Arduino? Um, and I said, we want to make it so that you can detect whether it's three or four aspect. So in this define signal aspect one, there's a number four. That tells the program that signal one is a four aspect. Below signal two is a four aspect. Below signal three is a four aspect. Um, if I want to make that a three aspect, I just change that four to a three. I change that to a three. I change that to a three. I can keep that as a four if I want. I make the other three, it doesn't matter. So, but we're going to keep them all as fours for the moment. Right, and below that, we then got the signal time. Signal time uh, for signal one, for signal two, and for signal three. And this is how long each lamp needs to be on for. So from green to red, to amber, to double amber, back to green again. And for the purposes of this exercise, I've set them uh, as three seconds. Uh, when you write any um, time in the Arduino software, it's written in milliseconds, and there's a thousand milliseconds in a second. So 3000 milliseconds equals three seconds. Um, now that's gonna, so that would take nine, 12 seconds to go through the whole cycle. So what we'll do is I'm gonna change that to 2000 and you will need to change that to, to whatever your layout uh, provides for. On my layout, uh, I, I go for about seven seconds per aspect for the simple reason, if I go too long, the, uh, I've got a relatively small oval and the train would already be back at the signal before it got back to green. So mine are actually quite short. I think they're about seven seconds or so. It seems to work quite well. So you can say, say change those to, to what you want. Um, the longer, obviously, may suit your layout. And you can change each signal to, to a different amount if you want to. So user set values start there and user set values end there. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, I'm just thinking anything else that I don't want to overcomplicate. There is, there is a few things. Um, let's just come down a bit. What I've done is I've written this software, which you might find annoying, but I'll, I'll just put it in as, as, a, as a little useful thing. On line 75 here, uh, I've got a little comment that says begin lamp test. Each lamp will light in turn for half a second. Half a second is 500 milliseconds. And all this purely does is as you turn on your system, the lamps just go through a little test. The green lamps come on, then the, the uh, lower amber lights come on, then the upper lamps come on, and then the red lamps come on. That's it, that's all it does. Um, now, you know I mentioned about there being three or four aspects. Well, if, if it's only three aspect, then there is no upper amber light to come on and all that you'll note is that when this goes through the cycle of half second intervals there will be a gap because there's no upper, uh, upper amber lights coming on so there's nothing wrong with it it's just we've we've uh, we've omitted that part of the um of the soft of the operation so there will be a sort of one second gap rather than half a second gap if you don't want this these any of this to happen so when you turn on your system and your layout all the signals will go through this if they're all um wide into the same same uh, bus pro providing power to the Arduinos, we can you can just simply delete all that lot. Or what people tend to do is when they're changing around with their software um, or, or experimenting, rather than deleting it and then having to write it in later, they just put forward slashes in, some, in, some, some, in front of something. Once you've got two forward slashes in something, see that went from orange, which tells the Arduino that it's a command, it's gone to black now, and otherwise it's just ignored any any text behind the two double forward slashes is ignored so you could just put double slashes in front of all this if you wanted to or just delete it it's entirely up to you but i'm going to keep mine in so i'm going to backslash backslash uh, sorry back backspace backspace so there's there's that um and i don't think anything else needs to change at the moment i might do another video just purely looking at this software because there are some things you may want to tweak yourself but I don't think so at the moment. So that's fine. So what we're going to do now is we are now going to load that up into our Arduino. Right, the moment of truth have, has arrived, people. Um, I'm now going to load this up to the Arduino. Uh, if all goes to plan, the lights on signals 1, 2 and 3 should go through a quick sequence where each light comes on for half a second and then it will then default back to green as a starting position. So fingers crossed everyone, here we go. 
uploading complete yay wow works well so far so good just tone down the color a bit and we bright those greens um okay fantastic right let's give it a test then um override switches what's that one that is override switch number one so that will click so far so good override switch number two brilliant and override switch number three three it's going well fantastic so each of these detectors should independently control the relevant signal so let's go for it signal number three train comes along detects excellent goes through its sequence while it's happening oh that's quick so train number one fantastic train number two train number three brilliant look at that so each signal is independently working which is really really good i'm so pleased about that um so if you remember right what i said earlier about there being a timely time setting for each signal we, we've set that to two seconds uh, on here for the moment so one mississippi two mississippi yeah brilliant fantastic and they all work completely independent of each other and if a train passes amber it goes back to red train passes double amber yeah fantastic so pleased um right okay i think i need a breather now um and think what we're going to do next right just had a quick change around um i've set signal one to four aspect signal two to four aspect signal three to three aspect signal time signal one time to two seconds signal two times to three seconds and signal three times to four seconds so let's go back to our thing so this should be completely out of sequence and signal three should only be three aspect bop, bop, bop. and we've got different timings now for each signal three should go to green Whee! that's good that's really good okay um i think we will now consider what to do next we have this working that's brilliant um okay i'm gonna think about that now just one more point I, I needed to make, I didn't make it before, uh, in case anyone's wondering. If you want to use your Arduino just to run a single signal, or two signals, but not three, you don't need to change any of this. It will all stay there, um, just working phantom signals, for want of a better word. So there's no need to delete anything. If you've only got one signal, just leave everything else alone and just concentrate on your one signal, whatever you want that to be, a three or four aspect, and whatever the time it needs to be. Okay, fantastic. Right, we've uh, well, we've gone as far as I think we can go at the moment. Um, you've now got the Arduino with the software on it, and you know which pins need to go to which piece of hardware to operate your train detection system and your signals. Um, I'm going to do a small next part, which should be part five, and then that's going to cover what next in terms of what other options we can explore. See you then.